Okay, well, uh, good morning. It's nice to begin the uh, second part of our school. Uh, already one week passed, so I'm uh, the last of uh, last week, but the first of this week. <laughs> and uh, yeah, okay, this, uh, what is my topic about? It's uh, uh, geometry of the gaze. It's an issue on uh, some uh, uh, Gestalt psychology uh, things, uh, which was fascinated me for a while, and this uh, lecture or talk was made uh, last year from Migrating Art Academies, uh, talking about the creativity, and was much broader. And now it's uh, here, I have here reconfigured, reconfigured and narrowed to the. Uh, some some interest of Francia. I'm not uh, actually a philosopher as a scientist, so and uh, uh, so here is more or less uh, artistic insights into the scientific facts, which sometimes fascinates with uh, almost unlimited imagination <laughs> for for the for the physical reality, and uh, I would like to. Why well, I, I can say some words because it's uh, interesting for me, uh, particularly uh, Gestalt psychology because it's uh, it it has uh, interest with actually factology, and it has uh, me uh, related very much with measurements. So there, I like it to be more how to say closer to physical physical reality. And here, what uh, yeah, I was wondering what uh, what to do it was actually. The, the name Rancia, I, I got it uh, only one year. So uh, for me, it was quite uh, tricky to, 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 to join this. But I, uh, reading some, some text, I found very close. And I will start uh, with a quote from Rancia, from an emancipator spectator. And actually, this chapter, which uh, was presented last uh, uh, critical meeting, and this is about human beings are tied together by a certain sensory fabric, a certain distribution of the sensible, which defines the way of being together, and politics about the transformation of the sensory fabric of being together. It seems as if the paradox of the art together has been dispelled. The solitude of the artwork is a false solitude. It is an intervening or twisting together of sensations like the cry of human body. And the human collective is an intervening and twisting together of sensations in the same way. And I like very much this uh, metaphor of fabric, which is, uh, uh, how to say, uh, tells us about uh, uh, ties which are not uh, very, how to say, solid, uh, rather than soft. And I like another term to, to tell about that uh, human uh, beings are soft-wired together somehow. And the software or interface uh, of uh, community is very interesting uh, and fascinating uh, uh, goal of uh, brain studies and neurologists. And I think it's very interesting uh, uh, it was very interesting for me. I think you will get also fascination. I, I'm included a uh, few speeches of uh, neuroscientists here, and perhaps it will be also quite quite interesting for you. So, uh, what is about the subjective experience? Actually, I don't know if uh, uh, social uh, sociology or uh, Philosophy are true sciences. For me, it is more related with art. And then when we're talking about objective experience, it's uh, uh, the physical reality or physical uh, facts uh, uh, are closer to object, let's say, objective. Because you know, we will see how the perception is uh, uh, create, uh, made like, uh, so that uh, actually we are very influenced to be subjective, and uh, it is very conditional. And uh, the soft wiring 
I guess it's uh, I don't know. It, uh, God uh, let us uh, how to say make mistakes, but soft wiring is something like uh, getting closer to objectiveness. So uh, I think it's uh, very interesting that from the beginning of uh, the. Uh, uh, gnosis, uh, the knowledge, uh, was very, uh, very important to determine uh, objectivity or determine subjectivity, and this determination comes. Uh, perhaps it, that led uh, uh, to divide the sciences and arts. But still, uh, a lot of uh, people like me want to to know if it's possible to join back to get to have. Uh, things join it together, science and arts. And, uh, actually, Migrating Art Academies, which was created some, I don't know, almost 10 years ago, was about uh, uh, trying to, uh, media, to, to join together, work together, media scientists and media artists. And uh, 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 what we also uh, have, uh, to have in mind this direct, exper ex direct experience. This is a, a very interesting thing when you're uh, talking about measurement and uh, uh, in, the, in the case of direct experience, you can see the, uh, some needle on the, on the uh, special, how to say, ruler uh, going and you experiencing the, the measurement. The, this, this could be quite obvious that it's uh, it tells us some very determinate fact, but also we talking or somebody expressing, I saw the red. So we, we expecting to know the color is red, but which percentage of red, we never know. So, it's a, so in fact, we have also always this direct experience very, very, in very interesting case. It's not, not like we always getting direct experience very objective. <laughs> and, uh, uh, also, there was a lot of uh, talks about the introspection, and in introspection was used actually from the time of uh, Sigmund Freud, and introspection is related with uh, uh, talk of somebody who could want to explain the problem. But still, is it this uh, could be told uh, objective? So it's uh, also a lot of uh, empirical introspections could be joined and then uh, perhaps uh, nowadays uh, 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 psychotherapists using this as a tool and uh, perhaps it's no, no more problem to be very much determined is it measured fact or is or, it, or you have enough uh, experience or you have enough uh, close effects about uh, some diseases or uh, whatever you get into the hands of uh, introspection. Uh, mostly uh, used in physics, measurement is actually about uh, making... Uh, and nowadays the measurement is not supposed to be that you, you just putting the ruler and, and getting a result or, or, or trying to measure the voltage uh, or, or the current of electric power, but uh, you uh, uh, physics nowadays have uh, 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 measuring diagrams and they are making uh, actually uh, uh, complex uh, measurements of uh, uh, very small t uh, small events. So that this uh, this is also uh, and the physics actually was very successful in in 20th century to to establish this measure and systems and methods to to have uh, uh, real facts. So here I will like to start uh, uh, my talk. Uh, uh, with Darius Gutschis, uh, the painter who made uh, uh, painted objects, uh, but those objects arrived uh, from the measurements. And he he was uh, he, his uh, conceptual idea was uh, to to make uh, kind of subjective uh, fields of gazes different people. So by by the po and there there is some. Pictures from the exhibitions, how he, he looked. He, he made quite a different uh, shaped objects. But uh, the process uh, how he was working is about 
measuring every individual uh, gaze. And uh, he was using a uh, wooden ruler and uh, putting uh, nearby, you can see here some dots he is uh, putting on the, on the screen, on canvas. And uh, yeah, and this, uh, it's about uh, uh, people to say that I see that. So, so he is, was trying to get into the uh, periphery of, 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 of the gaze. And so this uh, peripheral uh, gaze limitation created kind of, uh, I don't know, how do, you, how do you call this, oval, perhaps? Yeah? No, I know it's, if it's English word. Oval. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so that's a, it's, a, it's a shape of, of the human gaze. But it was interesting when he uh, once uh, happened at the hand uh, uh, wooden ruler and replaced with a metal one. That's a very interesting fact that he got quite larger uh, area of the gaze. So, and the, perhaps it's of, of the, the shining object. Uh, people, uh, or, or, or uh, uh, this perception or cognitive system enlarges the space of the gaze. And uh, it's uh, let me to make a kind of interesting uh, idea about that it's uh, all, all together, it's related very, very much with safety. And it's very, very ancient and instinct of uh, uh, you have to be in the system which is har harmonic. So actually, the, uh, it's very interesting, that in arts, uh, uh, Gestalt psychology was used mostly for composition and still left. Uh, and designers uh, use this uh, as a system of uh, how to put uh, uh, harmony working. Actually, it's perhaps nowadays it's not interesting very much for artists, but the designers are used very much this uh, psychological uh, uh, gestalt psychology just to, to understand how the cognitive system is uh, perceiving the objects and how it, how it works. So this, uh, this is safety and fear of discomfort or, or harmony and disharmony and this, uh, what uh, Greeks expressed, uh, chaos and cosmos, some kind of very, how to say, binary opposition, but still this, uh, is, it, it works in, in, the, in the way of uh, uh, subconsciousness level. And when we're talking about the consciousness, we're including the, the term of knowledge or gnosis. We, we know, we're feeling the, something which was not uh, instinctive and uh, we, we have to use it in some, uh, how to say, uh, practical or applied way. He was making uh, also some experiment and he's putting some interesting object in the, in the centrum of the gaze. The, the uh, gaze area also narrowing. So it's something like a focusing happens and you, you have a, a less area for the periphery and the focusing means that the, the gaze starting to, to, to narrow and to, to see uh, the object uh, placed in the, in the middle. Uh, yeah, that's interesting with uh, Gerchis. He uh, went to the Germany, I think, uh, for those artists who are not very much poetic, uh, Lithuania is not a place to, to work, so he <laughs> went somewhere where the order is more, uh, how to say, pre predominant in the arts. So here is uh, uh, his last uh, uh, pictures he is making now, photography. In the Schoenhauer uh, Alea Lives Boxes, it found it's also this out of periphery, though, so uh, so called object is a sky, but I don't know, really, it's uh, always uh, uh, boundaries of, of subject is uh, very interesting, I think, for all the artists. So there is some, some more of his pictures. And then and then it's uh, uh, very interesting when we're talking about the sky here. I found quite, in, uh, quite interest, uh, interesting Ugo Mulas, uh, Italian conceptualist, who was, make, uh, was making kind of 15, I don't remember exactly how many, but he was uh, making verification, uh, verifications if uh, the photography is true or not lying. So this one is uh, 
verification number five is enlargements. He made 36 pictures on 35 millimeters film. Then uh, select, uh, was trying to select every uh, frame and uh, to enlarge uh, uh, to a certain uh, amount of uh, uh, scale. And then he was also getting into the uh, some square in this enlargement and enlarging till grain uh, starts to be visible. And he's then asking, where is the sky? Because he, he, he met a limit of the film, but so, so, the, so that the, the sky is fictional. <laughs> so actually, actually quite a banal thing, but it's uh, how it uh, opens that we uh, are in the, in the sphere of, uh, uh, how to say, uh, conditional things. The, 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 the everything is so conditional when the, we, we talk about the, the representation of something. So this representation of the sky fails when uh, he was uh, trying just uh, a simple uh, uh, movement to enlarge uh, the, 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 uh, some, some surface. And then, yeah, okay, this uh, also gets me very fascinated, the sky itself uh, and the stars. Actually, if no, if no clouds, this specific area of Nida, uh, it's very nice and wonderful to, to watch the stars if, uh, if you will be happy to see that. And there's also some regions in uh, Lithuania where it's uh, out of uh, big cities lightning and it's, it's very fascinating to see August uh, sky. But there is not about enjoyment of the sky. The next thing which is for me interesting from the point of uh, uh, Gestalt psychology is this. Uh, it's a constellation. And uh, uh, the fact uh, that uh, we have uh, mythologies in the sky is also very interesting. Uh, uh, thing which uh, related very much with Gestalt psychology because proximate uh, stars we are joining in the constellation and the proximate proximity is one of the laws of uh, Gestalt psychology and when we join in we, uh, the brains constructs a shapes which reminds us some shapes experienced in the uh, real or how to say perceptional reality, perception of reality and, and experience. So we, uh, the, the human being uh, trying to find here swans, swans, uh, uh, beers, uh, I don't know, whatever. So it's, uh, the, 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 the sky is full of animals actually. And uh, you can uh, then, uh, how to say, see how the uh, man, uh, narratives comes to the mind when you see something and you creating a narrative, so you have to you have to explain that somebody is uh, in the sky, uh, in, and and this must be some kind of parallel life. So uh, constellation, constellation, from my uh, point of view, and not perhaps not only in the mind, but it's uh, it's something like a lack of visible. So something like uh, you have just a part, and uh, something is hidden. And uh, uh, the next thing that I could find this language is to fill the gap in the visible. When you saw something and you want to communicate or explain, meeting the friend, now what you want to talk is not visible, then how to talk about that? You have to establish some words, I don't know, you have to... To, to try to, to say that you have seen something which is no more visible. And I think uh, uh, Lacanian uh, idea about the lack uh, is uh, how language uh, comes to the deal. And it's, uh, and it's another thing that imagination goes no farther than experience. It's, it's a pity that there is no Christopher. He is an uh, expert on imagination. He, would be interesting to talk with him how many things could be used in imagination of uh, things which never watched or never heard. I think always we have the limitation 
that we, our imagination can't, can't deal uh, with the objects never seen or never uh, met or never, how to say, heard. And so if uh, to see uh, about, uh, of course, it's uh, my, uh, my artistic speculation, but if to, to compare uh, what is drawn on the, on the caves, on the surface of the caves, and if to see what is the mythology about in the sky. So it's uh, how to say, very simple to, 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 to make uh, imagination work like uh, hybrid, uh, hybridizing some uh, animals and human beings and, uh, and, uh, together. So it's, I think it's a uh, limitation of the imagination. If, if, if you could... Uh, 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 most what could imagination do, perhaps, it's, it's to, to, to make a, a hybrid shapes or hybrid uh, things. And you can see it's uh, in medieval painting as well. So there is serpent, uh, serpents and whatever is joined with some human beings or, or with uh, uh, chimeras, uh, lion and uh, uh, eagle or whatever. You can see that it's a, a certain uh, how to say way of uh, how how imagination could could go to the fantasy. Um, okay, that, then there is uh, uh, functions of the perception. Uh, actually, it's a uh, it's a way when the, we start from the seeing as well as hearing as an, uh, another senses, and then the cognition and communication. So it's uh, it's a very simple chain which. Uh, 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 makes this uh, community to, to make a fabric, uh, uh, used to say by Rancia. And there's uh, simple signals, it's uh, uh, patterns uh, of signals which is kept in the mind, and uh, it's uh, uh, which uh, emotional emotions which uh, could be used without you know explanation. I think it's also. Uh, kind uh, of uh, uh, gestalt psychology when they were talking about we remember certain uh, shapes of uh, or signals in, in very elementary way and then uh, complex uh, complex figures or complex shapes uh, still still uh, having the, the this, those uh, elementary elementary signs and uh, all, all uh, uh, if, if to say in general what uh, Gestalt psychology is about, then it's uh, all, always it's about figure and field relation. And the uh, cognitive system drifts to very simple uh, shapes, to very simple uh, relations, uh, background and uh, uh, figure. So this, this relation, figure, field, is always, uh, is, uh, how to say, analyzed in, in every situation. So uh, perhaps I'm uh, talking about very banal uh, things for you, but uh, still uh, want to, uh, to show how the very elementary things coming together, uh, constructing very complex uh, uh, problems or complex uh, situations. So it's uh, always we have uh, uh, the, the uh, holistic approach which is used very much for Gestalt psychology and with Kurt Kofka, one of uh, prominent uh, uh, scientists who worked uh, very much on bringing from the Germany to, to States. Uh, uh, the, the Gestalt psychology, actually Gestalt psychology, I think it's uh, born in Germany. And, uh, it's an absolutely German tradition and uh, psychoanalysis is more perhaps uh, French, even born in Austria by Sigmund Freud, but it's more popular in, in uh, French-speaking countries or states or whatever. Yeah, but, uh, and, uh, and the Ko uh, Kafka's uh, uh, quote here, the whole is other than the sum of the parts, it's about that very elementary things uh, c coming together uh, organizes very complex systems, and it's not the same that you have uh, uh, see a part, but, yeah, but the system which has a knowledge uh, could fill the gaps and you can uh, even, uh, watching the fragment, you could very easily to create uh, the rest of the shape. So this, 
There is main uh, principles of uh, uh, Gestalt psychology. So I, as I told, the figure ground, the closure, the continuance, similarity, proximity, and there is some other things. If you if you uh, want to, to go deeper to Gestalt psychology, you could find this uh, in different ways. Not only the visual, but also uh, uh, in the uh, uh, psychological cases. Then, yeah, uh, now I am going to next part of my talk. It's uh, community and how this uh, uh, simple facts about our brains and simple facts about our element, elementary uh, patterns uh, stored in the brains comes together. And uh, that is uh, one, uh, one of uh, uh, the points uh, which was mentioned by Rancière is, of course, we are sharing the same perception of apparatus. So we are made uh, almost the same. Uh, having, if, especially if you are, uh, how to say, condition of the brain uh, is, uh, let's say, normal, uh, you see colors, uh, co your color accuracy uh, is the same, you are not uh, uh, having disease of hearing or uh, whatever, so the, the apparatus is almost the same, and then uh, about the hearing, the composer could tell that after the age of 40, you are not listening anymore for very uh, high pitch uh, signals, and then it's, uh, we are uh, getting a little bit discomfort when we're sp uh, speaking with some, how to say, uh, not loud speaking persons. <laughs> we have to ask him, please repeat. So, and this uh, another thing is uh, which is uh, uh, common to creating the communities is using imagination. Uh, which is within experience, actually, and it's uh, using an imagination. It's uh, another point which is, I think, uh, uh, creates. Uh, let us create uh, uh, some me mediating forms, such as language, which is necessary uh, to to uh, to make a kind of. I don't know, communication and to, to make a communi community. Community and communication here is very nice combination. And this, uh, this is led, as I told, established symbolic order, language, religions, etc., uh, etc. Et so that's, uh, we have actually a quite interesting situation. We have, uh, uh, if uh, to go back to Rancière, what I found recently here uh, talking in, in the critic, uh, critical seminars, and that it's uh, this aesthetic regime which is goes and which is, uh, uh, is uh, an object of uh, exploration of psychology, uh, Gestalt psychology uh, comes to the ethic, one ethic regime when it uh, comes to the community. I mean, uh, different communities have uh, uh, different attitudes, and then perhaps uh, the regime is uh, important uh, uh, for. Uh, communal pur purpose, why you gathering in one group or another. So I think it's a very interesting point that it's, uh, aesthetics is very, in, let's say, uh, general and uh, ethics more, uh, I don't know what is English word must be used here. Uh, okay, but it's, it's, it's uh, uh, something smaller. And then uh, back to science, knowledge. Uh, what I found in Wikipedia, Wikipedia which is, could be generalized, this disambiguation. Uh, it's a familiarity, awareness, and, and, or understanding of someone or something such as facts. And it's, uh, yeah, it's quite general, but also I found some problems. Uh, which is related with knowledge, and it, it was, uh, uh, I will show now the quotes of uh, some scientists, 
uh, who uh, come uh, uh, pointing about some, how to say, limitation of the knowledge, in essence. And there is first one is from Ayer. We need to find a right to be sure, to support a, a belief in order to call it knowledge. So 56, so mid, mid, middle of 20th century. And then there's another quote from Popper. We can't know any general, general truth about the world for sure. And then Russell. We can only observe affinitive number of events and that for all we know. The next observation will contradict any theory we have based on the earliest ones. And then the last one which I suggest you uh, in this view, in our pursuit of knowledge about the world, we construct it rather than uncover it. Uh, one might argue that being sure is about being sure, that it's plausible rather than it's, it is true. Uh, Brunner on 86. So I don't know if, if we more advanced after the mid of uh, 20th century, but still I feel that it's uh, Uncovering new facts lets us uh, to see to the knowledge problem no more uh, in better way. So here uh, I'm going back to uh, some, uh, how to say, conditional uh, community, uh, which uh, uh, makes to think me about the seeing consciousness and narratives. Uh, which, uh, which, is, uh, which, is, which is actually the condition creating the religion or whatever, or any, any community. And uh, there was, uh, I was uh, talking about, uh, uh, last time presenting my works about experiment uh, using uh, uh, very simple phone camera uh, uh, and uh, making uh, some artistic research about uh, repeating images, and I still uh, pretty uh, interested in this, and I see that all the occasions when we are making the picture, it's about the right shape, which already is an apartment, it, it has an pattern in our brain. So we like to actualize this pattern to repeat the pattern and to have some uh, authentic experience of being uh, one, uh, once more together. Some, uh, I think some uh, psychologists uh, call that in French name déjà vu. And that is uh, sublime at déjà vu works uh, all the time. We want to, to prove ourselves uh, uh, that it's, uh, the, the, the world is quite authentic. So the, the uh, making picture instead instead of buying perhaps better quality <laughs> postcard uh, of uh, uh, this picture, I think it's uh, very good uh, proof. And there is some case studies uh, how unconsciousness uh, how consciousness deals uh, with the knowledge. I would like uh, to show you some representations or how to say, representationable, uh, in re representation regime, few pictures. Perhaps you know this. It is Vietnamese children after the, uh, an aerial uh, uh, Napalm attack near Tran Bang. It's uh, the picture by Nick Yut. Uh, and uh, I claim this picture has a symbolic meaning and it represent, represents uh, Vietnam War. We have everybody knows very well this picture. And next picture is also very representative. It's also about Vietnam War and it's uh, by Eddie Adams uh, almost the same time. And now it's uh, what, what is interesting, what I found interesting with those pictures, with, uh, with being symbolic. Uh, being representative and uh, being together uh, 
uh, very authentic. Uh, I don't know. The, actually, the, the aesthetic, uh, this picture was made by the purpose of uh, uh, perhaps uh, knowing the rules of uh, Gestalt psychology and was harmonized, made uh, quite clear. Uh, it uh, kind of reportage uh, picture, but I, when I found this one, it made made, uh, made me think about. And uh, actually, I found it is more actual, uh, more stronger, more vivid, more uh, how to say alive, uh, and uh, it's. Uh, but it's more complicated from the aesthetical point. And uh, Mick Wood cropped the picture for the situation which is very clearly uh, makes a representation of this naked girl crying and going uh, to, to, to the cameras. And uh, uh, by the Gestalt law, uh, this part it's very complicated and makes a very complicated uh, proximity and uh, disorganize uh, the harmony in the, in, in, the, in the picture. So this picture was cropped and then uh, uh, we, we have a symbol. I think uh, this making the harmony pattern makes picture, how to say, Better, uh, better stored in, in memory, better stored in the brains, and it, it comes uh, to the certain level of, of uh, 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 being the symbol rather as the, the uh, how to say, naked picture. I don't know <laughs> if, if, it, if it could be said like this. And there is uh, another case. Ah, it's okay. It's another shot from uh, the same, the same days and the same situation. And you see how different is, uh, uh, how it depends on composition. If the if the composition is not not normalized, it's, uh, everything is very much complicated, and I don't know. But if sometimes we have something will be repeated a lot of time, perhaps it will get some, I don't know, also some kind of representational status as well. And there's another picture, which is uh, uh, works al also like a kind of uh, symbolic one. I think it's uh, we see how those not seen frames from the same uh, situation are more actual. They are more alive. Like there is few minutes before. Uh, uh, before this situation, what I have uh, showing, and there is few minutes after, and those three images uh, make so intensive, you know, work of brain uh, when you you try to to get into the situation, and when you're leaving just for this one, uh, yeah. Uh, you see that it's uh, uh, repeating the same image all the time. It's starting to be not so very much of, uh, how to say, ethic, perhaps, I don't know. So for me it's interesting how the brain's working and how, the, how it's conditional is the situation. So I'm not really, perhaps, agree with Rancia that those regimes are, uh, uh, how to say, uh, predominant, perhaps it's it, 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 it very conditional, and uh, in, in some cases it, it, it work. Uh, uh, it depends very much on the dynamics of uh, how those images uh, were used previously. So it's, it's not not to say that every time it's the same, but still, I have here some doubts about these uh, regimes. Okay, so uh, what is my uh, what I can suggest and what I like to. Uh, to have an issue of uh, watching those two uh, few cases. 
that, uh, how the changes, image pattern dynamics, and there is a little bit of from the semiotics, perhaps the formula is this, but uh, this n uh, with uh, proclamation sign is uh, factorial, and in uh, who knows uh, mathematics, factorials means that it's it's must, it's a repeating uh, several times. So if uh, non-capital A repeating uh, several times, uh, you will get definitely symbolic or capital A. So it's my idea about that uh, uh, some factual event or naked image, if you like, uh, comes to symbol or, or extensive image. So it's my, <laughs> how to say, contribution for this, for, 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 for the discussion. So and this, uh, uh, if to go uh, uh, back to the uh, semiotic, uh, uh, semiotic, how semioticians using uh, uh, terms of uh, uh, naked image or an ostensive image, I think it's, it comes to index or, uh, or uh, symbol. So index uh, is something like uh, and uh, significant which shows uh, not being the same. I mean, if uh, you see uh, smoke on the picture, it is, is indexing re uh, uh, real smoke. It's not, not you, you know how it works. The index shows uh, not uh, uh, the, 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 the object, but shows, uh, shows the, the significance. Uh, Okay, my language is too bad for, for semiotical discussion. Uh, yeah, and symbol is something like uh, land, already land, and uh, the, we have to have a communal uh, agreement for that. So we have to, to use it in the, in the, in the term of uh, uh, we, uh, we agree uh, to share, for instance, uh, uh, language signs, uh, um, signs of, uh, uh, of language. And there is... Uh, how this uh, gaze works, how the geometry is uh, uh, gaze of uh, geometry geometry of gaze is applied in the nowadays science. There is a track uh, of gaze, is about eye movement, and it's uh, a lot of uh, uh, scientists and laboratories works on this. And uh, the simple thing is uh, about construction of uh, various security uh, cameras, uh, uh, software, and uh, it's, it's about how to, to find out uh, what is the interest of, uh, of the gaze works. So the apparatus used for that is uh, already developed, so eye movement shows that it's uh, how how the interest makes us, us track something. So though if, and this is back to those signals. They, 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 they store those uh, signal, signals as tracked patterns uh, in the computers, and the computers uh, recognize uh, immediately which, uh, which uh, pattern image uh, works, can, can, can be used. So if you put on the face, you can see this, uh, this uh, simple pattern which uh, is used for uh, recognition software, Im image recognition software. And it's a very, very interesting case that it's, uh, 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 the gaze uh, works uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in, in very interesting way and is applied also, also for social sciences. And so I found very interesting example in the internet. This uh, two uh, com compositions with the Brazilian woman after five seconds of viewing, the trace uh, eye movement uh, on the figure, and the Brazilian man after five seconds of viewing. So you can compare how it's uh, different. So let's see, this consciousness uh, also depends very much on the sex. Uh, there is about how uh, personal consciousness uh, grows with age, 
and uh, they, they, uh, the Stephen Paglerani found, found they, I found him very interesting about this, uh, uh, the stages of mind. It's uh, the, the sta uh, uh, stage uh, when you establishing the consciousness and this uh, uh, reason, stage of reason and uh, and uh, stage of, of time. And of course here. Uh, very, we go here very closer to the consciousness problem, which I like very much. That uh, the problem created uh, uh, with the same consciousness created it can't be solved by the, the same consciousness. And the, uh, very recent, quite recent, ten years ago, perhaps. Uh, Brain laboratories found mirroring neurons. I don't know how many of you knows about that, but it's uh, here. Here I found why is a cinema so popular. And here is uh, just for fun uh, some film about neurons. Yeah. I see I'm running out of time. Uh, but still, I would uh, like to come from the consciousness to uh, and uh, from the gaze, geometry of the gaze to. Ah, okay, there is uh, suggest to uh, scientists who perhaps uh, whom you, perhaps you can find very fascinating uh, uh, with a. Uh, foc uh, with a focus on the brain uh, processes. It's uh, Ramachandran, he is working in uh, California, and uh, Michael Persinger working in Canada. Laurentia University, I guess it's called like this. And uh, uh, yeah, okay, that's, uh, I have some, uh, some uh, uh, excerpts uh, where they are talking, but uh, perhaps it's uh, uh, very little of time and uh, not, not including, but uh, going uh, further to this uh, commune and communication, it's very interesting to uh, to see how the possibility is uh, to explore the uh, communication models. This is model is of communication is created <coughs> by Shannon, a um, great uh, scientist for uh, cybernetics. And this, uh, where the, this, the, how the cybernetics were, were used, uh, perhaps you know already, already, but it's a very interesting perspective uh, which uh, gives us uh, to, to, to see to the uh, noise. And uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, condition of noise uh, is really it's a condition for communication. And uh, Michel Seres uh, suggested very interesting, uh, how to say, uh, application for uh, for noise, for understanding the noise. Uh, he, uh, if it's a condition for communication, why not to use a noise in a statical way? It's, uh, 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 it's, it shows how the, our consciousness always is something goes from the uh, application for <coughs> how to use certain condition, but <coughs> in artistic way, it's very interesting how the uh, bad things, which is probably for the for the science, <coughs> could be used for artistic purposes. Uh, and here is uh, we found another. Uh, diagram uh, from Lacan, uh, how he is uh, talking about the conditions of noise. It's uh, recognition of the visual objects is overlaid with misrecognition. It's a gaze, screen image, which we see, and then it's subject of representation. And what is about? There is a uh, we have only virtual images, and uh, we have uh, the fundamental lack of the real images. So this uh, this is condition when the mis misunderstandings or misinterpretation of the things happens. I think it's uh, crucial to uh, to uh, to this determinate facts. 
And here is also, I would like to suggest some uh, Lacanians. Uh, Lacan was used for uh, Borromean uh, rings, where he is uh, pointing three, uh, three spheres, uh, real, imaginary, symbolic. And when, the, when he's talking about a, a subject, he's talking about like a subject is not, not uh, uh, something, uh, 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 how to say, particular. And it depends very much and shows itself like a symptom. But what I can uh, add here and to show how uh, this uh, regime, uh, regime of uh, constructing symptom could be dynamic and how this uh, situation of uh, ideas can turn to uh, social fractal how it could create a social fract uh, fractal, which is actually uh, lets us talk about uh, com community of the universe. Uh, if to put here the symptom of consciousness, and then to put here the principle of real, I mean the principle of real, it's a uh, uh, conditions of uh, cognition and uh, perception. And then to have in mind limitation of imaginary, we can go uh, to some, uh, yeah, uh, go to uh, condition or how we create, in, in which conditions we uh, can create those communities. And uh, then uh, we have a kind of uh, discourse event which is very close to fractal geometry. And then the social, uh, the social map, if to put the formulas of uh, uh, fractal geometry, we have very interesting possibility to create a patterns, really create a fabrics in the, in the way of uh, Rancia talking about. And here is some uh, very interesting uh, language uh, discourses uh, I have found uh, by scientists, uh, uh, linguistic scientist Kaplan, who was uh, showing how different discourses are used in, in languages. <laughs> the English is very straight, Semitic is white uh, so, uh, seesaw, Oriental is always around, Romance is kind of not sure, and uh, Russian is just disappearing somewhere in the steppes, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> and there is uh, very interesting how this noise or this communicational noise, noise co comes in the in the sense of uh, in distribution, for instance, in the European languages. Uh, the the Baltic actually is uh, less in the in in the less distance from the. Uh, centrum of both the uh, uh, Indo-European languages uh, centrum and then when the distance comes uh, bigger and uh, uh, those went apart from the centrum met uh, different uh, substances of languages uh, in new territories you are you creating absolutely new uh, conditions for, for the language so this uh, let's say distance could be used also as a communicational noise. It's not noise like we understand that somebody uh, just uh, making troubles to understand, but the distance is also create for the generations creates kinds of uh, new aesthetical or, uh, uh, regimes for, for communication. And that for, for that case, I also want to suggest you quite interesting for my uh, uh, for my uh, uh, examples uh, the book. The Horse, the Wheel, and the Language, it's by David uh, Anthony, uh, uh, about how the uh, distribution or, uh, how to say, migration of Indo-Europeans created uh, uh, nowadays civilization. And this, yeah, back to the social fractal. It's very interesting uh, to put, uh, to, to, to compare geometrical fractal with uh, social fractal. Well, we need for social fractal, what we need, social in, in, uh, it's about uh, social interaction, synergy, and life creation. 
And if uh, to see what is a fractal is about, uh, we have only two, uh, two uh, things in the fractal that it's a base, it's a line. Uh, and you can say it's a uh, linear, uh, linear expression. And then we have a motif. It's something like breakout from, from, the, from the base, from linear situation. And if to put to the uh, narrative, we see that it's a uh, uh, elaboration of, of, of event. And what is uh, actually mathematical or geometrical uh, fractal? It is uh, uh, coined uh, by mathematician Bernard Moldebro and uh, it's, it's about the growing of uh, narrative to uh, events that could be extended to the almost to infinity. And if to see how this triangle event is going on, it, it, in fact, it, we can get something like this. The, the, the huge uh, scene of, of grow, growing fractal. And the fractal you can find everywhere. For instance, the snowflake is uh, based on the fractals, all the leaves, all the uh, biological constructions are, are made from fractals. And uh, here, it's a particular formula how you can grow up fractal. <laughs> and yes, if we replace the notated uh, parts of a uh, formula to ideas, you will get ideas working like a fractal. So it's uh, more you can read about this in this. Uh, uh, I forgot now it's uh, somebody blogging on uh, on the on this uh, uh, how to say very fresh uh, idea of social fractal and this. Uh, uh, this, uh, how to say, creating uh, theories about networking and how, how uh, communities comes from the networks, various networks of interest. So what? Perhaps global mind. And uh, perhaps the last of what I can say in the case of this global mind, it's very interesting to have a perspective of uh, uh, several ages. And this case of Ukraine. Uh, last year, I got uh, to see this map, and there you can see uh, presidential elections uh, of previous President Yanukovych, and you see how it was uh, voted. And uh, uh, from the first sight, I met this very familiar with something I know from the history. Here you see a map of Great Duchy of Lithuania. And if to see, there's uh, some parts how this uh, south east of uh, Lithuania that, uh, that uh, time was, you see the last uh, uh, thing is, uh, yeah, nowadays Ukraine, Ukraine. And if to put those two maps Together, you see the, 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 how it's interestingly uh, pattern of uh, our mentality leaves a traces on the, on the, on the, uh, on the uh, sociological or social condition of nowadays Ukraine. So this uh, part of never been to the Ukraine, it's Crimea Hanat, nowadays it's Donetsk. Uh, still under, under troubles. So it's, it's, it's very funny. I don't know, it's really just <laughs> perhaps utopian, utopian map, but, it's, uh, uh, but I suspect there is something in this. 